Okay, let's be real here. Why am I here? I mean, come on. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sakura Angels. I, I'm going and definitely not expecting much. I mean, will we get more than two choice? One choice? I don't know. So, yes, it's made by the same people that turn Sakura Angels. So, yeah, let's begin. Every night, I have the same dream. Every night. I'm always brought back to this place without fail. And then every morning I'll wake up with no memory of this place at all, until the next time I fall asleep. Not a single night has went by without my consciousness being dragged into this abyss. Oh, my beautiful modifier. This realm is devoid of light, so much so that I can't even see my hand in front of my face, no matter how desperately I wave it. You see, it's stuff like this that makes me have high hopes for the story. But, granted, yeah, Sakura's Spirit was a, a good story. It just wasn't what I expected from the visual novel. Well, then again, um, in hindsight, um, Sakura's Spirit is kind of better than Nico Para, not gonna lie. In, in its own right, you'll understand when, obviously, we get to for the final episode. The concept of sound is just an, as absent. My steps silent and my distressed cries swallowed by the brute bordering darkness as quickly as they had left my mouth. Oh yeah, this is only going to be a short episode, um, about 15 minutes maybe, then the longer episodes will start like I did with Sakura Spirit back, way back when. I'm in a black, barren wasteland of nothingness. Ooh, am I there? Spending any prolonged amount of time here begins to make me doubt even my own existence. I, I love this guy already. <laughs> I mean, it's like they call calling to me. It's like they watch my series. Mm, he likes lifelessness. Let's do this. Yeah, despite feeling suffocated by a striking absence of anything, I know I'm not alone. Also, something is watching me. Stalking me from the shadows. Heartless. I can't say for sure what it is, but every once in a while, I'll catch sight of something from the corner of my view. A pair of burning bright eyes fixated pure, purely on me. They hate me. Despise me. There's an overwhelming sense of animosity radiating from whoever they belong to. How you hated so far? What's happened? I know they want nothing more than to lash out and attack me, but something is holding them back. The light. A force they truly despise. Invisible chains that bind and restrict them from the one thing that is on their mind. At first, when I began dreaming about this place, the eyes were distant, like glimmering stars. But with each passing night, the eyes seem to inch ever closer and shine ever brighter. I think whatever force has been holding them from me is beginning to fade. What will happen when these eyes reach me? I shudder to think. I know it's just a dream, so I shouldn't be afraid, yet it seems so real, but everything I experience here is so vivid. None of the usual murky haze that shrouds such dreams like environment seems to exist here at all. I have perfect clarity. I can feel the stagnant, freezing air all around me, enough to incite a shiver out of me every once in a while. Since I'm so used to this dream, I know how it'll end. Death. I'll wade through the darkness for what seems like an eternity, never finding anything until the morning finally comes and pulls me out of this nightmare. At least, that was how it usually ended. Something is different tonight. Those hateful burning eyes I'd always kept just out of sight before. I'm suddenly confronted by them. Oh, balls. Never before have they been so close. Never before have I stared straight back into them. Their narrowed, piercing gaze roots me to the spot and a shooting pain surges through me. I can't move. I can't breathe. And then from out of the darkness, a crooked smile spreads, just as sinister as the eyes. Oh god, what's going on? So close. I can practically taste the freedom. It won't be long now. Enjoy the peace while you can, boy, for your days are numbered. And then, 
everything shall change. I hope that that was a boy. <laughs> I do hope to God that was a boy. Well, I must say the opening is was very drawing. I'm not gonna lie. That that it gave me that kind of well. Actually, I didn't know what high school DXD was till you know we got to that part. Ugh. But still, my head is killing me. Um, no. Um. You know, with the opening, with what happened to ECL, it's like, okay, why is this happening? And then, okay, that's happening, right? Let's truck through, see what, see what happens. And then, you know, all that. I was like, oh, okay, the story's pretty interesting. These morning migraines are the worst. Every morning, without fail, I always wake up to a sensation not unlike my skull being pounded by a jackhammer. Thump, thump, thump. Oh! Add me, buddy. You there? <laughs> it's almost like a heartbeat. Well, well, I wasn't wrong there when I thought that. Hello, Benji. I feel like my head is going to split open. It had fun with Prison's Architect. It's weird though because even though the pain is so in intense, it never lasts long. In the space it takes me to get up and head for school, the pain is usually reduced to a dull throb at the back of my skull by then. Take paracetamol. So it's n so it isn't too much of a hassle in the grand scheme of things. But it certainly isn't a fun way to wake up. No, I go to sleep to kill migraines, not to wake up with them. I just find it odd how consistent it seems to be. Anyway. Well, I guess you know how an alcohol- well, people hung over feel, kind of. Well, actually, I don't really know myself, but I suppose what you're feeling comes close, kind of, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, enough pondering these weird mysteries. It's time to tackle a day. After a moment of wrestling with my blanket, I swing my legs around and drag myself out of bed. It sounds like you've fallen, buddy. A quick look at my bedside clock tells me it isn't early. Oh, right. What? A quick look at my bedside clock tells me it's still early, alright. Oh, Too early. If I had it my way, the world wouldn't start until at least a good way into the afternoon. But sadly, life just isn't that wonderful, indeed. Pulling back the curtains to let the light flood into my room, I suppress the urge to let out a hiss, almost blinding myself in the process. Too bright. <laughs> the rest of my time getting ready is spent fighting with my uniform, a tie becoming all the more problematic to put on when you're half asleep. Oh god. I think I actually got my hand stuck. How do you manage that? Almost choking myself to death in the most pathetic fight ever. I finish putting on the tie, the rest of my uniform complying peacefully with me. Unable to find a comb, I settle for just flattening my hair down with my hands. Blinking into the mirror, I'm left staring back at someone with messy black hair. Yourself? Eh, it's close enough. Somewhat dressed and somewhat ready, I stumble out of my room, my legs still not fully awake. Mama? Papa? Sister? <laughs> Uneven steps carry me dangerously down the stairs and I soon emerge into the kitchen. I'm greeted by silence. Oh, we're alone. The kitchen is empty. A familiar scene for me. Ah. My parents are what you might call... Yeah, workaholics. Basically, they spend more time at their respective jobs than they ever do here. A typical cliche, but still. Only, well, it's, well, kind of. This is the first time mo that a protagonist has felt loneliness. Most of the time, there's normally a sibling or at least someone there with them. Oh, not even a friend is here. Oh, Jesus. I only ever get this. So I suppose, from my experience, it's kind of new. Except with the same theme, but different outcome. I only ever get to catch them during the evening while we're eating. And then everyone is off to bed and the cycle repeats. Don't get me wrong, I understand they have to work in order to keep us living comfortably, so I don't hate them, but there we are, not another cliche, I like this guy already. It just gets, I don't know, lonely. Same cliche, different outcomes, I like it, oh well. There's no use moping about it. It's been like this for years, so I don't know why I was getting all emotional about it now. 
emotional. <laughs> don't, don't, buddy, I'm starting to like you. The plus side of them not being around is that I quickly had to learn how to cook for myself. Kokori-san, Kokori-san. It's amazing how fast you can adapt to that sort of stuff when you're starving. I don't think I have enough time for anything fancy to eat for breakfast, so I'll just sell for toast. <laughs> okay, you might be able to go wrong with toast. Oh god, it be a little bit quiet. I have sudden traumatic flashbacks to when the toast it rub. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, how does that happen? How? Ah, uh, what a day that was. But I've learned from my mistake now. Did leave it in too long? Well, how can it leave it in too long? How does that... It won't happen a second, uh, third time. <sighs> what a fool. Oh. Having devoured the only slightly charred toast, I sling my bag over my shoulder before... Starting for the f steering. Starting, yeah, starting for the front door. That didn't make sense at first. I give the empty house one last look over before opening the front door. It's kind of depressing to have no one to say goodbye to. Not really. Well, no, no. It's actually quite fun. But again, this has been the same for every weekday morning since forever ago. So far, we haven't met as uh, a girl character. I'm actually surprised. Well, not even a boy character. I mean, again, you know, expecting someone to be there for him in the morning, at least a friend. The sun is shining high in a cloudless sky. Birds are chirping overhead. Waves of students are passing by, happily chatting with one another as they all make their way to school. It's all so horrible. I'm not much of a morning person, so I can't even begin to fathom everyone can be so bright-eyed and bushy-tailed right now. Bushy-tailed, well, fucking Kitsune. Ugh, I mean, it's taken all my willpower just to be able to put a foot in front of the other without just crumpling to the ground. Like you like me every morning, buddy. I just have to hope the breakfast ki kicks in and gives me the energy I need before I'm forced to literally drag myself through the school gates. Why does it do that? I mean, if nothing's gonna happen, then just keep the damn thing there. Dot dot dot. <laughs> You're taunting me now, aren't you? I'll keep my head down and my eyes glued to the ground as I sh soldiered on. I suddenly notice that the vibrant atmosphere from before is gone. Silence has completely taken over. My steps, the only thing making any noise. Are you now buried under ocean? The air is still. Huh. That's a bit strange. Bringing my head up, I met with an unsettling sight. The street is... Well, it was already deserted, but I've never seen something... Oh, okay. No students. No cars. And even the cheerful chirping of the birds is gone. Well, the heartless has been released. <laughs> well, whatever it is, but still, that, that's the tile. What? I hurry forward, hoping at least to, I, to at least run into somebody. Anyone. Even the sun's once golden rays seem muted. The world tinged in dreary tones. But there still isn't a cloud in the sky. Okay, this is definitely starting to freak me out. And that just gives me an idea. I just need to... A split in pain shoots through my head, stopping me in my tracks. Like a spearing poker being thrust through my skull. Thrust through my skull? I've always wondered why thrusted isn't a word. Well, actually, I think I've checked this before, but people say put it... Well, I don't know. A headache? Now? Nothing is making any sense, Scythe. Desperately trying to keep myself upright as I ca clutch a hand to my head, I stagger forward. Well, screw it, we're going on. This is very interesting. Unlike the headaches from before that gradually died down, this one only seems to be getting worse. Oh, God. 
I'm... Oh, there's the heartbeat. It won't stop at all. I'm brought to my knees. I can hardly even think straight, my head threatening to explode at any moment. And then, through gritted teeth and a pained expression. Oh shit, what is it? Let's see it. Something that shouldn't exist. Yeah, the title, I definitely call it The Heartless uh, here, no, or The Heartless uh, Release, no matter what it, they say it is. Yet clearly, do, yet clearly does, as confirmed by my own terrified eyes. Holy shit. What is that? A monster. That's the only word that can come to my scrambled mind. A hulking, grotesque mass of flesh with gnarled fangs and red, slitted eyes seething with hate. Why though? The closest thing I can relate it to would be a dog, but no dog I know of is three times the size of me. It's form practically eclipsed in the sun. Seeing our face in the sun. It snorts with flared nostrils. Something like steam being exhaled out. Given its tense stance and the fact it's blocking my way, I can only assume it's here for me. But, yeah, why? What the hell is it? Where did it come from? Why are you so important? Why does it want me? Well, I suppose that comes close. A million and one questions race through my head, but I doubt I'm going to get any answer from this. This thing. There's only one thing I can do when presented with such odds, and that is to... Oh, my- Oh, a choice! I'm actually surprised! Okay! Okay, let me save. Now nah, then, I'm assuming we're going to be saved. So, for the sake of um, not looking like a sissy, but then again, we'd probably get called foolish, but for the sake of the game, and not looking like a complete fool, we're going to stand our ground. Of course. I don't know what the hell this thing is, or why it suddenly appeared before me, but I'm not going to let it take me down without a fight. Ignoring the pain that threatens to consume my skull, I strain myself up and steer right back into the hateful eyes of the beast. And then, tightening a fist, I lash out like lightning, my- okay, I didn't expect this. Fist connecting with its head, cleaning with a solid impact. Take this foul beast. Oh god, this is a dream. Wham. Okay, no. Bad idea. That did nothing. In fact, it looks even angrier than it did before now. Now, I was expecting someone to come in. I didn't expect you to run up to it. But, okay, we'll take what I can. All I've managed to do is bruise my own fist. I hope I haven't broken anything. I reel back from my brutal attack, given the fist in question a good shake. It still stings. Ow. Now what to do? My blazing surprise attack was met with complete indifference, and now I think it's too late to run as the creature is gearing itself up for a charge, its front leg digging into the ground. Oh god. I think I fought too much on this. This might have been a mistake. Yeah. I tried to turn tail and begin running, but the beast kicks off the ground straight towards me. There's nothing else I can do. I brace myself as the beast as best I can for the inevitable bone shattering impact. Oh god, I fucked up. Right before the beast can connect with me and bring my life uh, to a grisly end, a dazzling radiant light floods my vision, engulfing both me and the monster. The beast stops in its tracks. A gut? A gut guttural cry escaping it before it vaporises before my eyes. I can't see shit. Not a dot. What? What the hell just happened? Well, I well I was right. <laughs> um, until we know. Geez, that was a close one. Are you alright? Kind of. Do you have a cheerful voice cheer? Is it a birdie? A welcome sound after the terrors of that thing. It was a heartless. Oh, there's another one. Don't talk to him. I'm assuming you're a girl, because it's pink. We have to leave before. And then another voice that's less cheerful. In fact, they sound, a sound angry more than anything. Hello? Thumb fucking nail. 